In this video, I want to talk about how these AI agents that you have seen, Bolt and Lovable, how these softwares like really work. Because you see that you ask them to do something, you prompt them with some sort of thing that I want a basic landing page and I want something. They're just able to create it, right? For example, I just pressed on that button that said start a blog with Astro and you can see it just already gave me a code and a preview. And of course, this is a normal template, but I can say it, make it pop something like this. It will be able to go and start changing the CSS for example and the design and everything for example and it also shows you this information over here. How does this thing acts actually work? Because we know at the end of the day this is an AI agent, AI model that's doing all of this but how did they make it program so that it works like this and similar with Lovable as well. So Bolt and Lovable are pretty much the same software pieces which allow you to build a website. So let's take a look at how this exactly works and the reason I went down this rabbit hole and the reason I explored this is because we are cells are working on a very small AI agent internally for Fermion. So if you don't know about Fermion, it's a platform for coding education businesses and people who want to build their own online platforms for teaching people. And one of the things in that is the ability to create coding labs and creating coding labs has always been the hardest challenge. Because if you look at a platform like CodeDam, where we already created a lot of these labs, creating these labs and the challenges over here is the tricky part. How do you set it up as an instructor? that has a slight learning curve. So what we are doing is trying to eliminate that completely with the small AI agent. Now this is again like very much work in progress. It's not available. I'll probably create a separate video once this is available. But this model, for example, this AI agent is running on O3 mini and this is able to create any and every sort of lab you want. So again, I'll share the preview of the agent which we are creating later down the line. For now, let's try to understand how this specific thing works. So what you have to understand while understanding how these models work is that there is fundamentally an AI model at the core. Now this model, whatever it is, it could be an O3 mini model, it could be a deep sea carbon model, this could be a Claude 3.5 model, it could be anything, but it's extremely important that this model is a good model. It should be a smart model, otherwise whatever instructions you feed it, it will just not follow it, right? And this has been our biggest challenge with even with GPT-40 while building our own internal agent that sometimes it just doesn't follow what I'm trying to say it or what I'm trying to convey to it. So in that case, you need like this O3 models are extremely good from OpenAI. Similarly, DeepSeek is also great and Claude is also good. So you need a core model. Then you need two things. First is a very good system prompt. And the reason I'll tell you why I'm saying very good in capital, utmost important that you write a very, very good system prompt based on exactly how you want the model to spit out data. Because if you look at a platform like this, where your AI is somehow able to generate a layout like this and make changes to a huge code base, you must write a system prompt that is extremely efficient and extremely good. And then finally, you have to write a parser, a message parser over here. Now, initially what I started to think was that we need tool calling over here, open AI tool calling and you know, the typical thing that exists with some of these models that a tool calling can just update whatever is required. But the problem with tool calling is that you cannot stream the data, right? A tool calling just appears as a JSON thing and then you are only able to use it once the whole response is done. For example, let's say if I say, can you make it even better, for example, so when I say something like this, it will start to stream the message first of all, and then it will start to stream the changes also. So you see these changes are getting streamed. This is not possible if you're doing a tool calling for updating a file, for example. So this is very important that you don't use tool calling. You use tool calling very, very carefully. Wherever it is required, use that because one of the drawbacks of tool calling is that not all models also support it. So DeepSeek R1, for example, does not support tool calling. That means if you want to use DeepSeek R1 for anything, you have to structure structure your message in such a way that you have to write a message parser that is able to extract information which is relevant. And I mean, as much as I understand in my limited knowledge, this is the only thing that you need. These are the only three steps that you need. You need a very, very good system prompt. You need a very good model and you need a very good message parser over here to extract relevant information. That's it. And of course, then you have to have a feedback loop, which you are able to create somehow with the message parser or with the messages that gets feeded back to the model. And then, you know, it just continues. It just keeps on generating, keeps on doing 
changing things and updating even updating system prompt right so what you can do is on the fly you can also update your system prompt it doesn't have to be like a one time thing your messages and the response in fact can help feed system prompt again and again and that is precisely what we do with our agent so let's explore how bolt exactly works because they have an open source repository over here right so you see this bolt.new by stackblitz is an open source project but i am pretty sure that they just don't use it it's just for saying that it's open source they have just made a very very basic version of it available they are not running this thing right but anyway i think we can still understand a lot of nuances and a lot of things from this repository itself so this bolt.new repository is not the real source code of what bolt is running it's maybe like it is but it's quite old now but it has some interesting bits starting with the system prompt so you see over here this prompts.ts includes a get system prompt over here which is a very interesting file so if i zoom in a bit over here i want to cover a few things in this system prompt so first of all it starts with you know just a basic introduction of what bolt is and you know you are an expert ai in creating websites and all then what you will see is that everything they do is inside these html like looking tags right so even in system prompts they just start with this which is interesting observation if you're writing system prompt so that's one thing second thing is that i mean you can go into the system prompt and read more about it but the most interesting thing which i found was this artifact information and this is really good so what they are saying is that you as an ai agent you need to create an artifact every time a message is sent or at least try to create an artifact right and an artifact is a something that consists of shell commands consists of files to runs and consists of folders to create and that's it that's what bolt has to create right it has to create this artifact this whole thing over here now again like i mentioned this is not a complete system prompt and it is probably outdated as well because they are not open sourcing what exactly they are using but still you can get a good amount of idea so you see they also inject it here and there a little bit and they have this convention of the output coming out to be a bolt artifact and then there are bolt action elements inside that response right so how this works let me just skip the prompt over here and show you some examples which they have so let's say if the user asks something like this can you help me create javascript function to calculate factorial what they're saying is that you have to respond something like this you have to respond with some text if that's fine then you have to start a bolt artifact right so this widget that you see over here this widget actually comes from a bolt artifact html like looking tag from the ai response itself right and then inside artifact itself these bolt actions are the actual things which the ai would work on so it'll say that okay i want to modify or update the file with the path this and i'll update this then i'll have another bolt action of type shell so i'll run this command then so you see over here because in tag blitz or you know this bolt.new case it's also able to run commands inside web container so the reason it's able to do that is that there are a bunch of types of bolt action so inside you know we'll check this message parser as well how this works but this is the interesting and the, this is the core bit that you are somehow able to ask the ai to generate a structured output that looks like this inside an unstructured response so you can have like message above or below as well but once the bolt artifact starts once this stack starts the agent only has to respond in that specific manner that is the critical bit and that is why i was also saying that you need a very good model over here because if you use a bad model over here it will just not give you this output which is the critical bit it can spit out any random thing that is okay but this is the critical bit to the application and that is why i think bolt also uses claude 3.5 or whatever model they use under the hood but this is the core reason why you need a really good model and why you can't also use tool calling right because if you're building this action if hypothetically you use tool calling every single one of these actions would become a tool call and instead of like streaming the result which i showed you earlier also you would only be able to see the result as a whole thing in one go right so that's very important another example if you take a look at so you write a query as a user and this is where the bolt response starts so it will say certainly all of that and then it'll start an artifact and then it will do as many iterations as it needs right so it can run shell commands it can create files it can update files and so on and so forth over here and it can also then respond and again these examples are just reinforced what the rules are inside the system prompt so you see over here if you go back up and you see it starts by saying wrap the content in opening and closing bold artifact tags and specific bold actions 
for each bolt action add a type to the type attribute for example for shell for file and so on right so once you have an output like this generated by ai how do you use it how do you convert it into something like this and like this and in that case they have an extremely good thing again within this whole open source repository that is the parser the message parser.ts so again this repository let me be honest over here it's not complete right so this repository would not give you exactly like how bolt is working right now i don't know because they haven't like open source the actual thing they are using this is just a template but this is good because if you're starting to create an ai agent or an ai system this can take you very far so now they have a prompt.ts which is a system prompt for the ai you are using and then you have a message parser.ts that is supposed to extract out this bolt artifact on the fly right as ai is streaming this down the line this message parser.ts is able to extract it out so you can see i mean i would not go into depths of how the message parser itself works and by the way this also is incomplete in my opinion it doesn't properly stream but um, that's a different story but how this message parser basically works is that it looks for these opening tags and closing tags and tries to extract everything in between and tries to parse these action tags as well so again you can look at the logic of the message parsing that's fine but if i just show you quickly how the output of this looks like that would be something like this so you see that there are two kinds of actions that bolt can take creating or updating a file and creating a shell command inside the shell action it just has a type of shell inside the file action it has a type of file and file path and the content inside the html tags is the actual content which is you know of that whether that's a command or whether that's a file plus we can also verify it very easily by just looking inside under the hood on how bolt is working so let me just try to do some debugging over here so let's say if i do can you do it again as a message and if i hit enter over here you will see that this chat interface that we get and the response that we get over here I don't think it will show me response but i'm able to see the hex dump of response because they don't return like proper headers so what this means over here first of all if i go ahead and start looking for this bolt action you will see that they have the similar command over here and you can clearly see like this is like an updated system prompt because we cannot see the skill command over here which they have so they have kill command as something bolt artifact as one thing and bolt action as another thing and then they have a streaming message parser class as well over here so the same thing that let let me see if I can let the chat complete then I'll show you how the output looks like so the same thing that I just showed you inside github repository is also available inside their source code now I was trying to see how they sort of work so I was able to see some sort of tool calling as well with superbase so they are using tool calling with superbase and they have like a specific action and specific bold artifact as well so you can see like I think there is no mention of superbase here as well so this is like an old repository but you still would be able to learn a lot from this one so anyway as you can see now the response is complete so what i can do is right click and copy response right so over here if i clear this console close this as well and if i paste this you will see that the response it gives me the chrome dev tools is in base 64 so we can easily convert it back to a real response and if i copy this over here and paste it again now you would be able to see the actual response that we got from the ai directly right so over here this is the response this is the full response that we got from this ai a message id they are also using versal ai sdk and you can see if i map it one to one i'll enhance the design further with more modern features and improvements let's update the styling and add some new art animations and then you see the bolt artifact starts right so once it starts the bolt message parser is configured in such a way that it is able to understand this is the starting tag and then i can just go ahead and start you know this widget instead of like actually just streaming the text so it starts the artifact then it creates first action that okay i need to create a file file path package.json and then it'll start writing the file itself right then somewhere down the line again like i can format this even better but i'm just gonna skip that uh, work for now then it has a file again for src styles.cs and so on and so forth if you go down a bit once the file creation is done for example then you will see see i think somewhere around here it will also start to run commands right so then you have bolt action type start and again these are not documented things over here you can see that there is no type start over here only the shell commands are there so they are clearly doing something more and then they
they have a command, a specific run command as well, right? And then once it's done, it just resumes. I've made several improvements to the enhancer design further and so on and so forth. So this is like regular output. But this system right here, this then they hook up with their web container stuff, which they already have. And they're able to use these labels. For example, they are able to understand whether the file was created or updated because they also have a history of the files, which they have, right? So this is overall an interesting system, a relatively simple system. I would say it's not a hugely complex thing. It's mostly about three things, model, a very good system prompt, which they already have these two things and a very good message parser as well that is able to extract relevant information and pass it down, not only back to the model, but also to their web container agent system, web container API, right? That's the only thing that you need to create a system like bold.new. And again, like you don't have to create it like this. You can create it off any use case. For example, just like I mentioned in the initial part of the video that we are creating an AI agent for creating coding labs that look like this, where you have these multiple challenges, multiple file folders, and the AI agent will set up a lab for you. So it's not a web building sort of thing. So you are not going to build applications by the agent. You will create a practice problem by the agent, and then you will be able to solve it. And we'll bring it to CodeDAM, bring it to Fermion as well, and I will create a video once that is live. But that is how we are doing it, and that is how most companies are doing it today with smart prompt engineering, great models and building a feedback loop with proper software engineering, which you anyway need to do, right? So these AI agents are great, but you need to very, very carefully program them and you will get awesome results. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Do let me know in the comments if you have created an AI agent before, or if you're thinking to start one, maybe I can help you out. That's all for this one. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.